Did you listen to yesterday's show? Well, I certainly hope you did, because it certainly seemed like the Guardians were uh, watching, listening, some form. Several of the things I talked about from yesterday's show have occurred in the last 24 hours. We're going to get into all those roster changes, uh, coaching decisions, a lot of things going on, and we're going to join a game that is currently in the ninth inning on today's episode of Locked On Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for making Locked On Guardians your first listen today and every day, wherever it is you get podcasts. It is, uh, that doesn't look good in the ninth. Uh, pop up. I thought we'd have something going here when uh, Gonzalez got his second hit, a double to, there was only one, I think there was one out when he had that. But it uh, looks like it's going to extra innings. We'll talk about what has occurred in this game. Uh, I am Jeff Ellis, host of Lockdown Guardians. Before that, I was a lead draft and prospect analyst for Scout and for 24-7. Uh, appearing on you know ESPN Radio and Drive Time throughout this country. Uh, before that, I wrote for Indians Baseball Insider, and I've appeared on just about any Cleveland sports blog you can imagine. So let's start with this game. We'll get into the uh, you know the roster moves, the changes, everything else, all of which again, I mean, I I don't know if I necessarily say I predicted, but I went hard at. Like I sat there and explained why they needed to do what they ended up doing. So we'll get into that. So this game is currently three to three in the ninth. Um, if they lose this one. It's going to be hard to look past Josh Naylor. Uh, just a boneheaded play in the second, which led to multiple runs when he just was way too far afield. Uh, that inning should have been over. It wasn't an error, but because it couldn't be an error, but it, it essentially, uh, you know, it led to runs. And then the first inning, uh, you know, it's why you kind of want Jimenez, Jimenez, Jimenez and not Rosario at short. But Rosario made the right play. Naylor just couldn't pick it. Uh, and that led to the first run. So all three runs in this game, you can kind of put at the defensive woe of Naylor at first. Uh, it's just unfortunate. He's playing. He's one of the few guys who's actually hitting. I mean, not necessarily in this one, but <coughs> sorry about that. But he is playing well defensively, though he's a hot mess in this one. And all three runs from the Detroit side of things, um, you can you know can't necessarily lay at his feet, but you can say or you know he's directly responsible for them in some way shape or form uh i thought the other funny thing was the first run scored in this one remember how much i complained yesterday about like just send the runner do we have any faith this offense is going to be able to advance them just send them uh that's what they did today they scored the first run they it was a you know a bit of a bang bang play that could have gone the other way and a day after i complained heatedly about not sending the runner they go ahead and sent the runner uh, we're now heading into extras. You know, this is the problem when you watch as many games as I do. I'm like, Trevor Steffen, did he pitch yesterday or was that two days ago? He's pitched, pitched pretty recently uh, for the Guardians. We'll see what he can do as a uh, you know, bottom of the ninth here, right? Overall, in this game, I mean, facing Tarek Skubal, uh, he had gone three games without giving up a run, so getting three off of him is quite good. Uh, you know, they, they got some things together. They manufactured a few runs. But they're in a situation here where it's, like I said, this is the bottom of the ninth. This could easily be a 3-0 game. It could be. It was a, a solid start. I don't know if I want to say solid start. Pilkington, um, he struggled. Like He was not hitting his spots. He was all over the place. I think he was in the second inning when he had 54 pitches. He only went four innings because I mean, he just was not sharp. Uh, he managed to limit things. He managed to get out of some of the tr- problems. Uh, Robbie Grossman, major issue this entire game. Uh, reached base three separate times. Was I don't know if he scored twice, but he might have. But, yeah, it, it wasn't necessarily a great start by Pilkington. And we talked about it yesterday's show. The problem with now Savale with the butt injury. Yeah, it, you know We can say gluteus muscle, but let's be honest. He, he hurt his butt. Uh, with that injury... Oh, man. Nasty stuff by Trevor Steffen there. He just made Grossman, who has been on fire in this game, looked silly. Uh, man. <laughs> I, I, I just I marvel at the bullpen. 
I, I'm going to stand by. I think this is not like a year ago where Brian Shaw was unhittable um, at the back of the pen, but you know there was the thing where he was walking players at a higher rate, like twice as high as straight for his career. And James Karinchak was the other guy at the back end who then you know sticky stuff and then hell he's pitched like nine innings since July of last year. Uh, with with Trevor Steffen and Sam Henches of Steph Ford and Dunn, it's a different bullpen from the one that was a paper mache tiger a year ago. This is a really strong pen. But to go back to the original, you know, statements and thoughts, it's with Savale down. Like please act staying in the rotation with Savale down. Um, he, he I, I might be the only supporter he has. I mean, there's one other person who's who's uh, who said not nice things. Well, not nice, say not nice, but. Uh, <laughs> Negative comments on the YouTube channel uh, that it, it's almost like, is this Zach Plesak? Did he create an account? Because uh, the, the account got created literally the day the comment was left. But I'm like, I you know, I still think Plesak can get together. I still think he can be a solid back end guy. I'm not, and I'm definitely not of the camp. You don't cut him. No, not at all. Uh, but with this team, it's like Tobias Myers has been really bad. Like really, really bad. He has the worst FIP of anyone who's pitched more than 20 innings in the Guardians minor leagues. Like, he is honestly to the point where you're like, okay, so we we made a risk trade. It's not worked out. You could probably pass him through waivers right now. Yeah, maybe someone claims him because pitching is hard to, to find. But, like, anyone who's watched him this year just – and he's known for having inconsistent velocity. And, you know, it, there, there would have been questions if he would have been taken in the Rule 5. The Guardians liked him. They took a risk. It has not worked out. But Beatonfield isn't missing bats, and, uh, you know, they did get him from Tampa, who got him from another source, but, like, what's the last pitcher Tampa traded who did anything? Like, is Blake Snell even alive somewhere? I feel like he's just been hurt the whole time he's been traded. Uh, Tampa's one of those teams where I, we'll see what happens. I mean, I still like Beatonfield. He's still protect him, but he's not missing bats. Pilkington really wasn't pitching all that well, and Meyer, uh, Tobias Myers has been awful. So unless you move Eli Morgan out of the pen, but I mean, Morgan's also been dynamic in that pen. That's, that's the problem. Though a starter is worth so much more than a reliever. Yes, absolutely. If you need a starter, he's probably the guy. Like if Savale, oof, that's going to go in the gap. Interesting slide move. That's the second slide we've seen in this game. Guardians love to slide. Uh, slide in first base, slide across the outfield. This team just loves sliding. Uh but yeah, Morgan's just, I and mean, he was, I mean, look what he did in relief today. He is the, he was the best pitcher so far in this game for the Guardians, but it's so much more valuable as a starter. And especially if, like, I think you go one more time out for Plesak, and if it goes really poorly again, you got to consider moving him to the pen temporarily and Morgan out. Now that does honestly get rid of, you know, take out probably your fourth most effective pen arm. But let's be honest, Morgan's going to be continually stuck in the long relief role with uh, the way the management is. Tito's going to go to Shaw uh, and Stefan in those high uh, in situations where the game is in doubt. Those are his kind of bridge pitchers. Uh, Henches is getting himself into that group. Morgan's just the long guy. So I think it's not going to hurt the pen, even though I think one can make a case of like Morgan should be in that group with Henches, Stefan, and Classe to really just, I mean, how it... Now I could just be my own bias because, like, I mean, I, I thought put him in the bullpen and move him quickly to the minors from the start, but I also didn't think he'd add the velocity he's added so far in his minor league career. Not looking great right now in the ninth. Miggy Cabrera up, runner at second. Uh, I, I really, am I going to jinx the heck out of this? Let's take our first commercial break, come back, and discuss more of this game talk about the addition of oscar gonzalez and why he was added which we discussed on yesterday's show why he should be added and uh explain you know the roster moves that were made which were also the roster moves i predicted on yesterday's show get yourself to built bar right now because it is a time to be alive uh if you are a fan of built bar why do i say that they're uh grasshopper cookie aka they're thin mix Thin Mint is back. Their granola, my favorite, are back. My one warning with the granola is uh, you want to eat them a little bit quicker than the other ones. It's not a knock on it. It's just one you don't want to buy, put aside. Like, I'll only buy one box. But I'm going to definitely try the white chocolate berry because I lo I'm love. i out of peanut butter and coconut. I had, like, the last two today, uh, and they were great. That is my favorite flavor. 
again, just eat them quickly. But that shouldn't be a problem with as delicious as things over at Built Bar. Brownie Batter Puff is back. Uh, you get a three flavor sale on the banana, churro, and um, coconut. And any purchase right now, you get a free travel cooler, uh, which is a fifteen dollar value for free if you uh, with with any purchase right now. So go get yourself some granolas. That's my favorite over at BuiltBar.com. Remember to use the promo code LOCK15. You're not going to get a better deal on the best tasting protein bar anywhere else. So uh, can you tell the excitement? Granola's back. It's my favorite. I want to try the white chocolate. I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to be going and placing an order today. That'll be my second travel cooler. I'm just going to keep building up travel coolers from BuiltBar.com. Remember the promo code's LOCK15. Okay. The one nice thing, you know, you're probably like, hey, that was a long read. How? Where are we in the game? Uh, I have it on my phone over here, and it's paused. So <laughs> unpause, go back to the action. I don't miss a thing and can keep commenting as this goes on, as in I grow more and more fearful of uh, potential loss. Uh, so Oscar Gonzalez was at it. And again, I literally talked about why you should be at it on the show yesterday, which is if you're not going to give him a chance, oof, oh, come on. <sighs> you can't let that ball get past you. That's that's a blunder, especially the one out because now a sack fly wins the game. I mean, it's uh, that's just uh, you know I don't have it on, but it you know hit the ground, hit him in the chest plate. No good. Uh, going back to this one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just saw Kyle Farmer was four for four, and it feels like ever since I called him like a not a major leaker, he has been on like a a, a war path. Uh, overall, but uh, so basically the, the whole thing came down with Oscar Gonzalez is this is a team that already has Tristan McKenzie as a unicorn, and I've discussed that. We've talked about Daniel Espino as a unicorn. Oscar Gonzalez shouldn't work at every level. Well, crud. And the Guardians lose on a walk-off single by Miggy. <sighs> like, again, you know, the bad defense early on hurt them, and then uh you, you got to take care of things. I mean, I, I, I've I, been the biggest Trevor Steffen fan. And again, that could be, you know, because I've been a fan of his for eons. But that's just a heartbreaker. You got to beat the Tigers. I, that, they, they, you know, talking with uh, Jeff Carr of Lockdown Reds, he's like, you know, maybe you guys have a playoff. You know, a lot of people kind of think that this team is a team that could be around the playoff picture. They're not. And the reason they're not around the playoff picture is good teams beat bad teams. And Detroit is a bad team right now. Cincinnati is a very bad team right now. Like, they're not going out there and taking care of business when they face the the low-end teams. Remember when this team made the playoffs? Um, remember when? It was so long ago, two years ago. Remember when they were the, you know, the kings of the division and had, like, five aces? Remember they won, like... Was it like it felt like thirty games in a season against Detroit? I know that they don't even play thirty games in a season against Detroit, but they, you know, and that was almost like the knock on them. Like they only beat the bad teams. It's like, well, they're beating bad teams, but that's what you expect a good team to do. This team isn't doing that right now. You know, we'll get into the box score in a bit, but to go back and discuss what happened with Oscar Gonzalez and uh, you know why you add him is, you know, he shouldn't be effective. He just shouldn't be uh, that much of a, you know, can he be basically your hope, your best outcome is something similar to Tim Anderson, who has a similar, you know, walk and strikeout profile. There are guys who can be successful that way, but they are few and far between. So when you sit back and look at what Oscar Gonzalez has done, it's like, I, he's never been a top 10 prospect. He's, I, I don't even know if he's ever been a top 15 most places. Uh, because he just, you keep expecting him to fail, but he doesn't. And in his call up today, he's the only guy with, who had a multi-hit game. He had a a double and a single, I believe having the first hit of the game as well for the guardians. (coughs) Excuse me. Cold just won't go away. But, um, yeah, he, you call him up because... Your outfield's a bit of a mess. Uh, Stephen Kwan, we talked about his scuffles. He didn't even play in today's game. Uh, with everything going on. So they, how they made room for him. Because the other thing, too, it's like this. It, yeah, he came back as a minor league free agent and resigned with the Guardians. If he didn't get an opportunity this year, he's not doing that again. 
He's not going to come back another year if he doesn't get that chance. So, you know, it's he's earned it. Like, he, he worked his tail off. And like I talked about on yesterday's show, it's like the writing was on the wall. Yu Chen Chang was on his way out. If they're going to add him, we knew Chang would be the player gone. I still think Chang can be a second or third division starter. He, I think he's got 20 home run pop. I'm not, I'm not in the Hiram camp. I mean, everyone was, and I think a lot of the, the negativity towards you that I got when I was like, no, I think this guy can still be a potential starter, um, came from people, man, I've been very ummy tonight, came from people tired of Hiram who, you know, I, I don't know if Hiram predicted like a 50 home run season, but he might have, uh, he at least talked about him being a parental 30 home run guy, which is, you know, uh, what was it between like Grady Sizemore and Mike Napoli? This team didn't have a 30 home run hitter for like four or five years. Uh, that was also the year. I think Santana ended up hitting 30 that year as well. But a 30 a perennial 30 home run guy is actually kind of rare. So <laughs> I'm not willing to put that on anyone. But coming up, Yu Chen Chang looked like a league average shortstop, not a bad defender, league average. That was the book on him that he'd be a 50, maybe a 55 grade defender at short. He had the arm for third. He could play second. And that he had, you know, plus power. Now, he started to walk more in the minors, but he was never going to hit for average. He was always going to be a low average guy. But I think, like, especially, like, Los Angeles, that played Andrew Velasquez for meaningful innings and doesn't really seem to have, you know, I, I know Louis Rengifo is probably their version of that prospect who hasn't worked out, but it makes sense for them to potentially claim Chang. The Yankees really liked Chang when he was in the minors. He was disgusted in the Miller deal uh, is one of those things I had heard. Uh, obviously, the Brewers liked him. He was a central part of the Luke Croy deal before it fell apart. Chang has always had admirers. I think he's going to carve out a 10-year career as a utility type. Unfortunately, in Cleveland, he just he couldn't get the at-bats. I look forward to him getting an opportunity somewhere else and getting a real extended look. Because um, I, I do think he is going to, uh, you know, starter, backup, I think he's going to ha- play a decade in, in Major League Baseball, unless he decides that he'd rather, you know, he's from Taiwan, I want to say. So it's like if you want to go back and play in a Taiwanese league and be closer to home, you never know how the pull of home is going to be uh, and be a star over there. Because potentially he could be one compared to uh, a backup utility type. Because, I mean, we just saw... Uh, Anthony Alford just got let go after nine games in Columbus. So, I mean, the outfield in Columbus has drastically changed because Alford and Daniel Johnson, because Alford, uh, who has struggled to be an everyday player in the big leagues, got a contract with, I believe, the team that was in the, might have won everything or had the best record in uh, the Japanese Baseball League a year ago. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think Chang will, I think someone will claim him, and I think he'll get a chance to start, and I think he'll be, I still... Like I said, I think he is, at worst, a utility guy. As for Oscar Gonzalez, I have no idea what he's going to be. Anyone who tells you they know is full of it. Because he shouldn't work, but he has. So uh, you have to just let him go out there and see what he can do. And he had a great debut tonight. He's going to be one of the three stars of this game when we get into it. But yeah, it's a really strong performance by Oscar Gonzalez coming out of the gate. It's the right call. And the addition of Oscar Gonzalez the subtraction of Yu Chen Chang, and the aggressive sending of base runners, all from yesterday's show. So I get a little slap happy at the end of that one because of, uh, I mean, I haven't gotten more than five hours of sleep a night this week. I don't even know if I've gotten f- five hours of night. So a little bit slap happy in general, but um, all the points were there. Everything was true, and obviously uh, everything I talked about about why you had Gonzalez, the Guardians agreed. You know, Aggressive base running, Guardians agreed. Uh, a lot of things ended up coming true from what I had stated. We're going to talk a little bit more about this game right here, and we're going to talk about some uh, other going-ons. We haven't really even talked about all the roster moves that happened or even you know promotions uh, all on today's episode of Locked on Guardians. Listen, I'm now uh, four games in a row picking the correct outcome for the Cleveland Guardians. I should be going to bet online and uh, taking advantage of my knowledge to uh, make some extra money. And if that is your thing, our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. 
BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. If you're curious about, curious about, if you're curious about my streak, first I want to say thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and every day wherever you get podcast. If you're curious about my streak and who I would pick to win tomorrow, it is sad that like Bieber versus Alex Fiedo, I'm debating. Right? Like one of the top viewed pitchers in baseball the past few years versus a rookie who struggled with health. <laughs> But, like, I just, does anyone really have confidence in Bieber right now? I'm going to lean towards the Guardians in tomorrow's game. I mean, they should, they're the better team. <laughs> Maybe not even on paper, but they should be uh, with the way Detroit has played this year. But then again, Detroit is now only three and a half behind Cleveland. So we'll see. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting matchup. So, rest of the roster moves. Framo Reyes, hamstring issue placed on the disabled list. I mean, that could explain some of his struggles. So, uh, hopefully he gets healthy, comes back, and is the Fran Mill he, of a year ago when he came back from the disabled list. They called back Richie Palacios. Now that is, he's been optioned three times. So, like, the, with that new rule, I mean, I don't know how the COVID stuff affects it, but soon, I think after this, if he gets sent down again, the next time he gets called up, he has to stay with this team the rest of the season. Or they have to release him, I think. I mean, that, I assume that's the only other way you can get around it. So yeah, he has been up and down so much that we aren't even in June yet, and uh, he can't be sent. He, he's got you know one more trip to the minors left. So the bigger issue here is is when someone gets healthy and he gets sent down, we probably won't see Richie Palacios for a while. I mean, I guess you're hoping that maybe someone like Nolan Jones uh, gets healthy and can play, but uh, man, he, Nolan Jones has been MIA this whole year. I mean, he had two big injuries a year ago and uh we just haven't seen much from him but with that happening Palacios coming up Oscar Gonzalez coming up Yu Chun Chang being designated and then Savale being put on the disabled list with Connor Pilkington being added uh that's what got us to where we are today with everything else some of the things that have to be noted Will Brennan uh we talked about his impending promotion or at least i did on twitter i'm trying to remember if i talked about it on here as well uh he got promoted it was just a matter of time brennan needs to be added to the 40 man at the end of the year he has been a high level performer for the guardians uh, almost from the minute they drafted him can play all three outfield spots uh, could he see time in cleveland this year i think so i definitely think it's within the realm of possibility uh Pulling up some data here. Uh, I tweeted out earlier in the day a listing of uh, Cleveland prospects who have the, you know, ranked by Runs Created Plus. Uh, Will Brennan is currently fifth in the Guardians and Tyner minor league system with a 143. Uh, he's hit 311, 382 on base, 504 slugging, 10.8% walk percentage, 10.2% strikeout percentage. So he's not striking out a lot. He's walking at a good rate. He can play multiple spots. Uh, he's been fantastic. If you're curious, number one is uh, Milan Tolentino, who is walking and striking out 17% of the time, has a 383 average. Uh, number two, it, it is funny. Okay, maybe let me know if you think this is funny. We have Milan Tolentino at one and Mitchell Tolman at two. Uh, they have nearly identical walk percentages, strikeout percentages. Uh, they're, what else is There's something else where they're very close as well. Their data is similar. Their names are kind of similar. They're both MTs. Uh, Eight-year difference in age. Uh, what a year for Tolman in Buffalo. I don't think he gets... Uh, definitely if Cleveland, he's not going to get an opportunity. But uh, he's played super well. And maybe the most surprising thing of all this year, third in runs created plus, Bo Naylor. What a rebound for him. Striking out 21% of the time, walking nearly 20% of the time. Uh you know, I, I wish I hadn't cut off the top of this. Uh, that was a dumb thing when I was doing a screenshot so I could look at which one of these columns is BAPIP. I think it's this one here, so I think he does have a 351 BAPIP, which, yeah, a bit unsustainable, but is also a really positive sign of contact skills. Uh, four, Joe Naranjo, the first baseman we've talked about. Six, Will Bartlett, another first baseman. Valera at seven. Alex Cole, surprisingly, I think at eight. Nine, Isaiah Green, who came over in the Lindor 
deal. 10, John Kenzie Noel. I know I've been hating on him a bit, but it's more of just, you know, he's got the highest strikeout percentage on this list, over 30%. That's a concern. Will Benson at 11. I mean, I, I don't know what to make of Benson. I, I don't see how he gets there. And 12 is Oscar Gonzalez, uh, who is tied with Jake Fox, who's there. But 14, how about Jose Fermin? You know, one of those players that I'm going to keep standing for because I think he is a major league player if he gets a chance. He's got no power. That's one of the reasons he's a little bit lower on this list. A 390 slugging, a 229 batting average, but a 359 on base, walking 15% of the time. And then David Fry, the catcher they got for... Uh, Mejia, who, you know, suspended 80 games for performance enhancers, 107. He's got a 256, 291, 512. He's been hitting for power. That's a lot of, I mean, not walking at all. It's one of those things I look at David Fry's numbers and I'm like, oh, maybe this is the case where you worry about Park and not getting too excited because a lot of his power, a lot of his offensive production is power driven. But yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting list. You keep going down. Uh, Jordis Valdez, I discussed his kind of breakout this year. If he can be a league average bat, then he's a future starter with his defense. Micah uh, Pyers, who was a small school kid who's up in double A. Uh, Diane uh, Frias, who is, you know, a uh, signing. And those guys are 99, 98. Jorge Burros, 98. Brian Rocchio is in a 96. And then Jose Tenya at an 88. So both those guys definitely not, I think, what people expected them to do it is also interesting just to go look at the uh walk to strike out like um percentages always but just the the you know the one-to-one ratio where like mitchell tolman is a one-to-one well brandon is a better you know it leans towards uh more walk he has more walks and strikeouts where so he's at like a 1.06 you got someone like david fry at a 0.19 uh, Micah Pyers, 0.17, 0.16 for Jose Tenya. I believe that is the worst. I mean, even Oscar Gonzalez is a 0.23. So there's some concerns for a few players in the year they're going. We've seen a lot of guys not quite perform. Um, I think up to expectations, some players are definitely having breakouts. Uh, you know, I was trying to remember. I, you know, I also looked into the pitching side of things. Uh, there's a few players that, you know, stood out. Uh, let's take a quick pause break because I want to go see how Joey Cantillo pitched today. So I, I tweeted out because, you know, we talked about him on the show this week that he, uh, you know, he's up to. I'm going to pause it so I can pull up the exact numbers because no one wants me scroll. So it's 26 or 17 innings pitch, zero earned runs, 26 strikeouts, three walks, nine hits and 10 batters over the minimum. Uh, three times 17, if I did my math correctly, that's what, 51, uh, batters, 51 outs, half of them by a strikeout. That's really darn good. And then the other players want to talk about too, that I really have not talked about at all in the show is again, I set it for 20 innings pitched, like who is the minimum inning pitch total and Andrew, I'm going to butcher this Mises, Mises, Zach, who I believe is with Akron, uh, he has the best FIP in the Guardians minors, which is the fielding independent ERA. That is the best indicator of future success. He is a a, uh, a left-handed pitcher who they took in the 32nd round out of the Northeastern University. So a small school guy back in 2019. What has he done? Well, he has a bat up nearly at 400. So again, bad luck. Strikeout, his K per nine is over 14. His walks per nine is 2.2 something. And he has an ERA under one. So when we talk about lefties and system, I have not really heard his name come up and you know how much money he got back in 2019, how much did the Indians, he got $5,000. Now Northeastern is where they also got Aaron Savale from. So it is a program they're familiar with. Uh, biggest draft pick from there was Carlos Pena back in the day. Adam Odovino also came out of there and Savale uh, has the currently the third best war. And then uh, you know, Mike Glavin. Came out of there who the Indians drafted back in 95. And also Luke Carlin, manager in the Indian system. So they have some ties to that university on top of having two pitchers from it in their minor leagues right now. But he has been a standout performer and statistically was someone I thought you, you should at least keep an eye on. There, there's a few players jumping out there uh, performing very well. And I think that you got to look at. Because especially when we're discussing like Tim Heron, uh, now... 
Andrew M, as I'm going to call him rather than try to butcher his name, he's going to be the top lefty reliever for Akron. And you know the major league team isn't trusting Ghost right now. So th- these guys can get opportunities. They're both Rule 5 eligible. And they're performing at a high level. Just saying, keep your eyes on them. You, you We'll have to see what happens, but they're, they're doing enough to make it so you have to pay attention to them. I've been Jeff Ellis. This has been the Lockdown Guardians podcast for this week. I'm going to take some time with the holiday, so no podcast Monday or Tuesday. Give myself a little break. We will come back on Wednesday and get in the swing of things. Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. Remember to rate and review, download daily. It helps. Watch on YouTube. I know the team hasn't been as fun of late. <laughs> the YouTube and the downloads are reflecting that. So uh, if you're just not feeling the Guardians, uh, still throw it on in the background. I, I don't care if you mute me. If you play me, that still really helps the show. And it's one of the simple things you can do to continue to help our growth and continue to make the show look good. Remember, we always want to show the higher-ups at Locked On that this is a show you value and that they should value as well. So, uh, as I stated, I'm Jeff Ellis. You can find me online at Jeff MLB Draft. And as I end every show now, go, go, Guardians, go.